You must have studied in high school math when y is equals to x to the power m. Um, we bring m m here and we subtract one from m in the exponent part, which is equal to the first derivative, right? So here we are calculating the nth derivative. The first derivative will be mx to the power m minus 1. Then we'll find the second derivative where where we find the derivative of first derivative, right? So what we do is uh, we bring m minus 1 here and, and then we subtract 1 from m minus 1 which gives us m minus 2. So it's simple. We just uh, differentiate the we just differentiate the differentiation, right? The first time I so first time I differentiated it, I got this, and then I differentiated it, and then I got this, right? Now again, now again we'll repeat it to find the third derivative. I did the same. I did the I did the same thing because m because m into m minus one is a constant. It will stay like that, and m minus two will 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 come at the front, and then we'll subtract one from from m minus two, which will give us m minus three, right, and so on. So we can observe a pattern here. So similarly, for nth derivative, it will start from m into m minus one, into m minus two, into m minus three, till so on up to n factors right, into x to the power m minus n. How did we come up with this? Please observe here the pattern. It's the third derivative here, right? So, so here the exponent of x is m minus 3, right? So similarly, for nth derivative here, it's x to the power m minus n, right? So we subtracted the same number for which we are trying to find the derivative from m. Right, so x to the power m minus n, and what about this part? It goes on up to n factors. So what does that mean? When we are trying to find the first derivative, we have only one factor here. When there is second derivative, there are two factors here, and when there is a third third derivative, there are three factors here. Right. So similarly, we are trying to find nth n derivative, there are n factors here. But what about the last term? What is the nth term here? So I need you to observe here. We are trying to find the third derivative. The last number which is subtracted from m is 2. When we are trying to find second, the last number which is subtracted from m is 1. Right? So that means when we have n numbers, the last number which should be subtracted here after m is n minus 1. So so that means the last term should be so that means the last term should be m minus n minus 1. When we are trying to find the nth derivative uh, m minus n minus 1. 1 less than the 1 less than the number for which we are trying to find the derivative, right? So which will give us m minus n plus 1, right? Uh, right? So m into m minus 1 into m minus 2, it will go until m minus 1 plus plus 1 in m into x to the power m minus n. Now, if m equals to n, now if m is equals to n, then this part becomes 0, right? And x, x to the power 0 is 1. So we'll be left with only a number m factorial, right? And m and n both are equal, right? So when you so when we solve this part, we get three into two into one. How? Because this part will be m minus n minus one, right? That's how we got this, right? What will be the second last term? Second last term will be m minus n minus of minus one, that is m minus two. The, the third last will be m minus n minus three, right? So m minus n plus three, m minus n plus two m minus m minus n plus 1 right so um, so when when m is equals to n this part becomes this part becomes 0 this part also becomes 0 this part also becomes 0 right so we are left with 3 2 and 1 and if we and this and if this goes on and if we move to right side 
this will be 4 and 5 and 6 and so on till m. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 till m which is equal to m factorial and when m is not equal to n this expression is applicable and please note that m should be greater than 0 when we are applying the squirrel 